welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I'm your yarn host, Jennifer. Today, got a couple co-hosts running around in the background. That's Miss Scarlet and Oreo's over there. She jumped when I said her name. It was kind of funny. It scared her. <laughs> um, before I get into what's going on with this episode, if you hear a weird um, vibrating noise in the background or like a, a machine type zzz, it is bugs. <laughs> it's summer. It is um, cicada season. So the cicadas come out. They make a god awful noise all day long. And they irritate everybody. <laughs> They're not actually as bad today as they have been in prior years. Um, the first year that we moved into the house that we bought that we live in now. We lived about five miles up the road. And not five miles, maybe three miles. I don't even know if it was that far. Anyway, we lived that way. That neighborhood had an eruption of cicadas. Cicadas are these gross bugs that come out of the ground. They like will sometimes live under the ground for like 11 years. Some of them for seven years, they they stay alive under the ground by eating nutrients from the roots of the trees. Now, I may be wrong. I am not an entomologist. <laughs> but, um, they come up, they grow wings, and they fly in the trees, and then they last a couple weeks and die. Anyway, I know you guys probably did not plan on learning about bugs today, but you're going to learn about bugs. I'm going to teach you everything I know, <laughs> which is not a lot. So... They make this god awful noise. That last house we lived in had such a massive brood, is what they're called, of cicadas that outside of the garage, and I have pictures, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put it in because it's really gross. There was like when they come out of the ground, they get out of their exoskeleton and then grow wings and fly. So the the shells of their bodies, <laughs> which look like, um. A mix between cockroaches, crickets, and praying mantis. They get rid of the exoskeleton and they leave the shell behind. So in front of the garage at that last house, there was a pile this thick all the way across the front of the garage of shells. And it was disgusting. It was so gross. And it was so loud. Like if you stepped outside, the vibrating noise was so loud it would like give you a headache. And then what I was in the process of actually moving into this house when this was all occurring and I came over here and there's like none none no noise no nothing so I was like so so happy to get out of that house I'm <laughs> just saying because gross it was gross um there was actually, there was actually I went out in the front yard of that house and a squirrel was trying to eat one of the new cicadas and it had its wings, so it had got rid of its exoskeleton. And the squirrel was trying to eat it. And he had the thing in his paws. It was the craziest thing I ever saw. I didn't know squirrels ate bugs until this. Um, he had the thing in his paws like this. So that tells you how big the bugs are compared to a squirrel's hands. And he was banging the head of the cicada against the tree to kill it. And the whole time the thing sounded like a maraca. <laughs> and then he turned it up and he bit the head off. <laughs> so, Entomology 101, here today on Cinnamon Stitches, right? So, I wanted to show you, I finished something. Well, I didn't, I didn't weave in the ends. I don't like weaving in, I don't mind weaving in the ends with crochet, but when it comes to knitting, like, I'm struggling to figure out where to weave in the ends, so it's all, a lot of stuff just still has ends. Anyway, <laughs> there's a funny story behind this too, Okay. I don't fully understand how knitting works yet still. I'm new, you know, give me a little credit. I'm doing good, but um, go eat, go eat Oreo. So there's distractions, there's people, <laughs> there's dogs, there's life. Okay, so I got out my bloom yarn. This is Premier Bloom. And I started to think, I came up with the idea that I'm gonna make myself a hat. And I'm going to follow, you know, the Ross hat pattern. 
but because I noticed in my previous projects my stitches were kind of loose apart so I figured if it's anything like crochet I can just go down a hook size and so I went down a hook size and then I figured well if I went down a hook size I could use Ross's pattern and match it up with the hook size instead of with the yarn <laughs> I don't know if this is confusing to anyone else it's confusing to me but I was wrong with that assumption so it started as a hat but I put the amount of starting stitches to go with the hook instead of the yarn or the the needles instead of the yarn and it's just a little bit too big for my head so I realized that very early on I realized that around this stripe and so I was like, all right, well, it's going to be the Ross Cowl. Now, let me say, the Ross Cowl is not an official thing. I think it would be awesome if Ross wrote a pattern for the cowl. <laughs> it's something I made up, but I call it the Ross Cowl because it's basically the Ross hat turned into a cowl. Okay, if you understand. <laughs> I, I know. I know. Okay, so you can see that's too big to be a hat, but... It is perfect to be a cowl. And I just think this is so, so pretty. And I just, I'm going to make a matching hat. <laughs> I'm going to try to make a matching hat with this yarn. Because I have some left over. But I just think this is so pretty. Like, it's pretty around your neck. But also, like, when it's a little bit chilly out, you just wrap it like that. It keeps your face warm from the the cold air tuck it into your coat keeps you warm isn't that beautiful and it's lightweight enough that you can wear this like in the fall or the spring so that's not and if anybody's curious this is my hairnet or my snood pattern very handy for keeping your hair off your neck when it's hot outside so that's all I have that I have made but this is I mean it's Wednesday since Monday I finished this that's pretty good so, I wanted to show you, my eyes are like, oh. So, I wanted to show you some happy mail that I got. <laughs> I, I forgot what I was going to say. It's that kind of day, guys. It's been that kind of, it's, it's been a crazy week. I, don't, I have no idea what I was going to say. So, instead of following a train of thought that I have been let off from, Let's just get to the happy mail, okay? Now, oops, that came open. I got a package from Sheila in Alabama. And I opened it up. And there's this cool little blue zipper bag that says nitpicks on it, right? I knew what this was what it right away because I've seen these online. I've been looking at stuff. <laughs> so... I was kind of excited and it's a really, really pretty color. And look, it matches. Okay, so open it up. There's a nice little note in there. And, ah, goodies. Knitting needles. These are Takumi. There is a crochet hook. Very fancy, very fancy. And look, it matches the bag. <laughs> Pretty. Some Altoid Cinnamon Mints. Mr. Cinnamon said these are very, very good. He likes them. Some very sharp, fancy scissors. These are Craft Smart. Cable... Cable, it says cable stitch holders, but I think these also are called cable needles. Very cool. Don't know how to use them yet, but I will learn. Beautiful. Look at these fancy, look at these fancy stitch markers. Fancy. And then, I'm just going to be real, guys. I have no idea what this is for. <laughs> I have no idea. There's a little one and a big one. So, I don't know what these are for. If, if you know what these are for, go ahead and tell me. I told Mr. Cinnamon I laughed a little bit because um, <laughs> I used to date a guy in high school and his stepfather 
used to do um, mortuary work. So he worked with dead people. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what he did. And he showed me his body bag, which was filled with the tools that he needed. And it had an actual body bag in it, but he called it a body bag. Um, it was basically like the doctor's kit for like the people that work on dead people. And there was something in there called uh, an S, an S needle, I think. And it was shaped kind of like this, but like with another side on it. And it was used to sew up <laughs> the cutting open of a dead body. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's incredibly morbid, but that's, that's what it made me think of. So I don't know what that's for, but I, I'm sure you guys will tell me. And then she also said, look in the zipper part, which was awesome. There are some needles and again they match the bag so that's super awesome I'm trying to hold all this and not drop any of it and I'm not succeeding <laughs> so thank you so much Sheila when I receive very thoughtful gifts like this and this next one I show you in particular I actually cried opening it and the reason is is because my crafting, my crafting, I'm dropping stuff everywhere. I'm doing a terrible job today. I'm doing terrible. Okay. <laughs> my crafting abilities came after my mom passed away. So I never got to share that with her at all. And I very much mourn for that relationship with her and being able to show her what I've been able to do. My mom's been gone a long time, but um, I still, I miss being able to, you know, because, you know, moms have a way of just being proud of you no matter what. They have a way of, oh, that's my baby, my baby. Look at what my baby's doing, you know. Or sending care packages, or even a grandmother would do the same thing. Um, they send you care packages like, oh, I'm so proud of you. You're doing a good job. You learned to knit. I'm going to send you a care package of all of like, and I just imagine this is what a grandmother would do because I did not have a grandmother growing up. Um, so that's what this package felt like to me was like a mom or a grandmother or an aunt or someone who loved me. And I know, I know you guys do love me, but like would send me like, you started knitting. Here's like some of my stuff. Like. To get you started and that's totally like the sense i had with this package this package is from mary in west virginia and i'm i'm getting a little bit i'm getting tear i am a cry baby lately i'm really really i'm sensitive i'm sensitive lately i'm not even gonna apologize it's just it is what it is i am who i am right okay so that's what this package, this is the first package I received. This is what this one felt like to me is that, you know, this is like something that was, I, I put this together for you because I care about you and I, I support you and you're doing a good job and all that good stuff. Someone keeps knocking on the window and I don't know who it is. <laughs> so to start, there's this really cute little project bag in there with little sheepies on it, right? I think this is so, so cute. I feel like I have seen this in a video somewhere before. Either this particular bag or this fabric. So, I don't know. I just, it just feels familiar to me. <laughs> I saw it somewhere. Alright, so. What's inside the bag? There's so many, so many goodies. There is. Lots of needles. And a lot of these are the, the Clover Takumi. And then there's some metal ones that don't have markings on them. But the cords on all these seem to be very, like, loose. And, like, when I open them, they just lay flat. So some of the needles that I've used in the past, they curl up really bad. Like, flip and hit you in the face if you're going the wrong direction. Irritating. I've discovered I don't like the needles from my Michaels, the loops and threads. They are terrible, terrible. Um, 
I feel like I wasted money. I've only used two pair, but the first pair, the the cord was so hard and stiff in it, it was it kept just flipping and I'm rotating it and twisting it. And then the second pair, the join right here is so jagged where the plastic connects to it. Like I could not get my hoops, my loops, my thread over that. It just kept sticking and then it would gather up and I'd have to force it over. So after I was done making this, I promptly threw those needles in the garbage because it was even caught. Look at, I don't know if you can see that. It was causing snags and like messing up the yarn because it was sticking so bad. And that's not, that's not good knitting. It's not. And then there's a very fancy Susan Bates um, gauge. It's, it measures gauge and it also measures your needle sizes here. Very useful. And I do not have one of these at all. <laughs> so I'm very, very glad to have that. And then I'm going to put the needles back in here. There's a beautiful card, which this card kind of like made me happy because this is Monticello and I, Mon I've been to Monticello with Mr. Cinnamon. We went for an anniversary trip and it was a very, very nice trip and the gardens at Monticello are just stunning. And then there's a little baggie of goodies. And again, you guys, I appreciate you guys not treating me like I'm stupid because sometimes I'm like, I'm dumb. I don't know what any of this stuff is. <laughs> But you guys have been very um, gentle with telling me, well, this is what that's for, and this is what you're doing wrong, and you know, all that good stuff. So, with that being said, I don't know what all these are for. This, for example, I have no idea what this is. Okay, and I discovered yesterday that it comes apart like that, but I don't know what this is for. So, if you guys could tell me what that's for, that would be incredibly helpful. Because I'm, I'm very new, I'm learning. I have no shame in my game. Got a couple of these. These I have seen at um, Hobby Lobby labeled as stitch marker holders. So if there's something else that these are used for besides that, let me know. And then another cable needle. And then I almost bought some of these at Hobby Lobby. <laughs> and I was like, no, I don't need them right now. These actually go on the ends of your needles and it, and it protects the points and it holds the stitches on from sliding off your needles because if you lose, and trust me, I've lost several sets of like, the loops just go off the needle and then I gotta go try and fix it and, re and I'm not very good at that. And then, this is cool, it's got needles in it. So, for weaving in those ends that I don't like to weave in. Very, very cool. But that's not all that was in the package. <laughs> no, 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 no. Ms. Mary sent me a pattern for her favorite socks. Okay. And that is called the Toe Up Socks from Really Clear Designs. She said that's her favorite. And that will probably be the first pair of socks that I attempt when, I'm, when I feel that I'm ready. I'm not ready just yet because working with the bloom yarn was frustrating enough because it's so skinny and I just felt like it should have been going faster and I was really hard on myself. I'm just being honest. Anyway, then there was some books. Snow day sets to knit. There's some really, really cute sets in there. Really cute. Um, knitting mittens. And I was totally thinking, well, if I can do like the hat and the ribbing on the hat and I already know how to make mittens in crochet, I was thinking maybe mittens would be easy in knitting. So I was really excited to see this because it's like Mary was reading my mind and she was sending me like all the things that I was actually thinking about. Knit dishcloths. Hello. Great for practice pieces and practice pattern reading, which is exactly what Carrie Penny from the Happy Crafty Homemaker recommends. And this is what got me started on learning and actually finishing a project is dishcloths. So this one is actually going to be put to a lot of use. I can tell you that already. I thumbed through it. There's really beautiful designs in there. How beautiful is that? And it's not hard. It's knits and pearls. You just have to count. So it'll be something that I have to do when I'm in bed at night and the kids are sleeping and not going, mommy, 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 mommy. 
you know, <laughs> you guys know what that's like. Knit a block. Isn't that beautiful? And this was, this is cool because inside here is knit blocks, like as if you're doing granny squares. And my local um, yarn shop actually did a uh, knit along last year where they had different knit blocks every month and they would put, they they joined everyone's blocks together and made like a community blanket. It was really, really cool. I followed along, but I've never been inside the store. So <laughs> I know I got, I got problems. So I thought this was cool because also inside it says that any of these blocks can also be used for dishcloths. So that's like two, two things in one. You can practice, you can practice the squares. You can make a, either a blanket or you can do it with cotton and make dishcloths. You can do whatever you want. And then knit, knit Simple Magazine. And then that was the end of that Happy Mail. That was very, very sweet. And then I got another card. This one is from Rhonda in Canton, Michigan, which is not far from where I grew up and lived the first 30 years of my life. She sent me a nice little card. And... Last but not least, we got a package from <sighs> Darlin. If I say your name wrong, I apologize. I think it's Linnell. Linnell. I can't tell if it's an R or an N, and that's that's my bad, not yours. And she lives in Ohio. She sent me a birthday card. We'll start with the birthday cards. This package is so special to me. You guys, you're, you're going to see. Mickey Mouse. Yay, right? Okay, so inside, she wrote, my first project like this. Amazing. Wait, do you see what she put inside there? And she sent me some tea thin mints. And this one sounds so delicious because caramel is my favorite flavor in life. Vanilla caramel. Now. I'm not supposed to drink caffeinated tea, but we're not going to tell nobody because <laughs> I'm drinking that. That sounds delicious. And then she sent me some Disney Tsum Tsum stickers. I love, I love Disney Tsum Tsums. Like when I see them, I'm like a little kid. <laughs> I'm like magically six years old again. I just love them. They're so cute. It says birthdays are all about wishes come true. Hope that's exactly what yours brings to you. Hope it's the best. I think that's Linnell. So, I just, I hate, I hate second guessing myself and like, oh, did I, did I offend her? Did I say her name wrong? Because if you guys saw my handwriting, <laughs> I was told, I, I wrote my name, I signed a receipt at a store somewhere one time, and the lady looked at it, she's all, you're either a doctor or an artist. And I said, why is that? She said, because your signature, like that's either a doctor writing or that's someone who's very artistic and like does something in the arts. And I was like, yeah, we'll take artist. <laughs> we'll say I'm an artist. <laughs> Cause my handwriting is terrible. Like it's so bad. It's so bad. Anyway, inside you guys, project bags, but there's three different sizes. Okay. And okay. Minnie Mouse. So cute. Well, wait till you see the inside of these bags, okay? We'll start with this one. It's a little notion size pouch or like maybe a sock size bag, maybe? I think I could do socks in this. And it's got the polka dot. I am like a sucker for polka dots. I love polka dots. Look at it. Is that not cute? And the ribbon is polka dot. Cute, 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 cute. Look. You could also put like notions in here. I have... Now going back to the, <laughs> we'll go back to this package for a second because I, I should have brought it out here. I have mint containers this size that are Mickey Mouse mints that I got from Disney World and they have Mickey Mouse characters on the front but they are exactly this size tin, okay? And I save these and I put needles and stitch markers and safety pins and a little pair of scissors I have that fit inside this. And I use that tin for, I, I take it and I throw it in my project bags. And this is like the perfect size to hold that. 
and then a bigger pair of scissors if I need and a crochet hook will fit in here I'm pretty sure and then you make sure that this yeah perfect for a crochet hook okay you just take this and you throw it in your project bag and then you have everything you need to finish the project in the project bag separated so it's not tangling up with your yarn it's not snagging your yarn it's not doing any of that that's why I love this size bag I think that is so so handy and then on top of this size bag she sent me this size bag again with the polka dots inside this is perfect for needles or my eyeglasses because I'm always misplacing them and then I could throw that in my bag if I need to or in my purse or wherever I am going I got that very very I was I as soon as I opened it I was like so excited because let me tell you I get my mail at my P.O. box and then I sit in the car and Mr. Cinnamon drives me because I hate driving I get really bad road rage I get really bad road rage especially people who cannot drive in Virginia it is terrible so I make him sit in the parking lot until I open all my packages because <laughs> I can't wait till I get home ever and then there's this big giant beautiful bag look at this this actually is gonna be I, I'm working on a blanket right now and I am going to switch that out of the bag that I made and I'm gonna put it in this bag because this bag is it's more appropriate for what I'm the type of blanket I'm doing right now which is requiring a bunch of smaller skeins that are worked together and I'll show you why okay it's got the drawstrings right it's got the beautiful inside polka dots I'm just gonna flip it inside out so you can see it's got the box bottom this is the inside of the bag guys pockets a little clip thing big deep pockets all inside so there's four big giant pockets and the reason that is so perfect is because the blanket I'm making now is um, the Hirschner's um, Afghan number two or two ply or something like that and it's a thin it's a thin yarn and so I'm holding them double and it's a it's a fade set so there it goes it's four different shades four different shades <laughs> okay so what I'm gonna do these pockets are the perfect size to hold both skeins of yarns that I'm pulling and using both Wow, I'm confusing myself I'm using two balls at once I'm holding the two strands together to make a worsted weight yarn and since there's four colors I have eight balls of yarn which means two in each pocket so that I can just leave them in the bag and then pull the color I need when I need it because I'm doing a striping effect this bag is absolutely perfect and then I can just throw my notions in here and put that in the bottom of the bag throw whatever else I need in there Let's throw it in the bottom of the bag yeah super happy wow I talked for almost 30 minutes I was not expecting this video to be that long talking about yarn mail and bugs <laughs> oh I'm sweaty guys it's starting to get warm I figured I'd move it outside today because um we've had a lot of really bad weather and you may be able to tell like it's starting to get dark out we've had a lot of really bad weather we're getting parts of the uh, tropical storm is hitting us and so we're getting just buckets and buckets of rain and thunderstorms and and there's actually like really bad flooding in my neighborhood right now so um, not in my yard thank God but like some of the outskirt of the neighborhood is getting really they're getting hammered with the rain and they're flooding and <sighs> so <laughs> it was cool enough this morning that I could actually come outside it was like 77 degrees I think it's probably about 82 right now but it's still kind of humid I think sometime during this week I'm gonna try if the rain holds off to do a garden tour of back there because it has been requested 
it is really overgrown right now and we can't get back there with the weed whacker because it just keeps raining and so it's I can't even get to my tomatoes right now and it's really frustrating to me because every time every time someone is supposed to go weed whack it rains so that's frustrating <laughs> it's frustrating you gotta like try and run out there real quick and it's a whole thing and then I think I also want to do a tour of my updated craft room for you guys it's gonna be just like a short little video and I think that will round out the videos for this week and yeah I think that's all for today I actually just hit 30 minutes so I'm going to shut up and let you guys go about your <laughs> your day oh one more thing one more thing um, I'm getting a couple of complaints about the ads on YouTube have increased that is not something that I have done at all um, I got notification I think last week or the week before that any video past a certain amount of time I don't remember if it's 10 or 15 minutes uh, YouTube has decided to add what they call mid-roll ads and I do not manually add mid-roll ads to my videos ever because I find them irritating and so if you see where my video keeps stopping for ads that is not me and I have no control over that unless I take the ads off altogether but then I'm not making any money on my videos and so I kind of have to just roll with it because right now I think YouTube is trying to increase their profits which I'm, they're a business but you know I know not everybody's happy about it I'm not happy about it. I hate mid-roll ads I get frustrated myself because I watch other youtubers and I'm like okay like every five minutes there's an ad but I just thought I would let you guys know about that so if there's a lot of ads in this video I apologize it's not of my doing at all at all so I'm going to let you go. Have a fantastic rest of the day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.